ability camping offers hyperbaric oxygen as an alternative therapy to adults who have suffered a stroke, have MS, cerebral palsy, or for those who suffer with fibromyalgia. In this simple diagram, the area in the blue represents our hyperbaric chamber. The white balls in the balloon represent oxygen molecules. As we increase the air pressure in the chamber, this pressure pushes the oxygen molecules closer together. When you are in the chamber, your red blood cells are now capable of carrying more of this concentrated oxygen, and some oxygen can even dissolve into the blood plasma, the fluid that carries the blood cells. Plasma is capable of getting into very narrow places, even places the red blood cells may be too large to travel. The real question behind hyperbarics as an alternative therapy is what does the central nervous system do with these elevated levels of oxygen? Some doctors in the hyperbaric field perform spec scans before and after a series of hyperbaric sessions. These scans, taken before hyperbarics, show the adults who have suffered a stroke, have MS, to have areas of the brain that appear to be underactive. And following the hyperbaric therapy, these same areas of the brain show higher levels of activity. Next in this video, you will see some of our hyperbaric clients talk about their experiences at the camp and the progress that they have made. Well, my name is Glenn and I had a stroke some three and a half years ago. Everybody stressed that I needed to work very, very hard in the beginning because 90% of what I would eventually recover would be recovered within the first 30, 60, or 90 days. I don't really, really remember exactly whether it was 30 or 60 or 90. I just remember being impressed with how short a period of time I had to effect whatever recovery I was going to get. And uh, returned home in, quite frankly, depression set in. And I was quite depressed for several months. And to be honest with you, suicide crossed my mind on more than one occasion. And now at the end of one and a half years, I'm able to do about between two and three and a half hours at the gym. It was at the gym one Saturday morning when somebody mentioned to me, he asked if I had had a stroke and I told him that I had. And he mentioned that when his mother-in-law had had a stroke, and had had HBO therapy and had significant results. That spurred my interest to, once again and I went back to the internet and um, did a number of searches there and among them was the Ability Camp. And the Ability Camp not only offers HBO therapy but it has in addition, something called conductive education. I didn't know what that was. Um, but apparently, this form of therapy began at the PITO Institute in Hungary. Now, when I first got here, the first thing that happened to me was that my hope was restored. Um, that turns out to be very, very important because if you've been over three years without much hope, um, not much really good happens for you. But my hope was restored in day two or three. On the second or third day, I took my cane, my walking cane to my room, and I hung it up, and I have not used it since. Now, I haven't seen my family uh, my wife and children are all back in um, Texas along with my grandchildren. So I haven't seen them yet, but I have talked to them on the phone. And they are unaware uh, that I have uh, been able to dismiss this walking cane. They have noticed that my voice is stronger on the phone, and I have noticed that my words come more quickly, and I'm able to form my sentences more quickly. Than before. Now, 
the exercises that we have done with the conductive education. There is a ramp, a, a gentle slope ramp that comes up to a platform and then three steps on the other side to step down. The first time I walked up that without my cane, um, I was a little apprehensive about that. But I walked up the ramp and down the steps and a little shaky, but it was okay. I turned around and up the steps and down the ramp. But I was really impressed with how much stability comes in such a short period of time. There's a ladder on the floor and you have to step through that. It's kind of like football players running through a bunch of old tires. And there too, I was barely able to do that initially. I was impressed with how, how closely I could do that without error. And I'm convinced that if I continue practicing with that, my walking will be much, much better. Um, there's a ladder on the wall. Every day we work on those, that vertical ladder, moving our hands from one rung to the higher rung. And we put our feet up there. And Anyway, there's a series of exercises done there in front of those. And I've noticed some, some very persistent progress made. And that in my stability and my walking and standing and the progress is slow, it's not fast, but it's very, very persistent. And we do that every day. Conductive education is done five days a week. The HBO therapy is done twice a day, every day for 20 days. Well, in the conductive education segment, on the second Friday, which would have been the 10th day, um, Terry and I, and Terry is the guy that I'm here with, um, we walked outside with the conductor and we walked maybe a city block or half a block, one way and, and then back to the parking lot. And then the conductor says, I'm gonna give you an assignment for this weekend. And she said, I want you to walk to the stop sign at the end of the road and back to the camp. And I asked her, Tunda, how far is that? And she said, you don't want to know. And she was kind of right about that. Well, that was Friday afternoon, about five o'clock. Saturday, we started out between the dives that we did that day and we walked half of that. We walked to a, a little farmhouse and, and back. But on Sunday, I sat out at 12.20 and walked to the stop sign at the end of the road. It's 1.1 miles that way and 1.1 miles back. 2.2 miles in less than two hours and 10 minutes. And that was without my cane. I was very, very impressed with myself. I had never thought I would be able to walk two miles without the cane and to have done it in a relatively short period of time. Oh well, that was just one of the highlights, but that was at the end of week two. Now, I want to say a, a word to you about conductive education because if if you're in the States, chances are that you haven't heard about that. The person who performs the conductive education is called a conductor. And the place where the therapy happens is not called the lab or uh, the clinic or anything, it's called a classroom. The equipment used, I was really impressed with the low technology aspect of it. N no, nothing flashy, um, no computers, no video screens, 
Um, no remote sensors. This low tech, very effective therapy. Now I must say that my therapist at home, my physical therapist there, had told me that, that um, you know, physical therapy shouldn't hurt. Um, and if it hurts, we must be doing something wrong. Well, I'm going to tell you, um, this conductive education is somewhat unpleasant. <laughs> um, there is pain involved, but it's a good hurt. Um, you just know that, that the woman wouldn't ask you to do that unless it was for your own good. Should you decide to come to this place, the ability camp, uh, something else is going to happen for you. This place doesn't cater to stroke victims only. What is commonly done here is that they help several palsy children. You're in for a real treat because when you meet those kids and their parents, and their grandparents, I might add. Um, you'll be touched, I think, as I was, um, by their commitment. And you will begin to pray for somebody other than yourself. I want to add that Terry, the other stroke fellow who's here, uh, his presence has been uh, very, very important to me. We have done the conductive education together and we shared the pain and the, the laughter that has happened there. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> How is the bouquet? <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell cares about the bouquet when you've lost 37 pounds of sweat? <laughs> and I know that the hyperbaric oxygen therapy and the conductive education have been more beneficial to me because he's here. Now, I have, I'm leaving my contact information with uh, the staff here at the ability camp. And if you want to talk to someone who's been here, you know, feel free to, to ask for that contact information. And I hope your experience is as good as mine. But the most important thing is that what your therapist and what your doctors have told you doesn't have to be true for you either. Hello, my name is Terry McFetris. I am a 58 year old stroke survivor from Midcoast, Maine, USA. I arrived at the doorstep of Ability Camp with hope that I had carefully not saddled myself with any expectations. What I've found since I've been here is that this is a place of both hope and expectation. The hope is supplied by the clients seeking recovery 
the expectation is an integral part of what this place provides. You walk into the conductive education room and the expectation is that you are going to walk out better, whatever that means for the individual. It's not expressed as a hope, it's expressed as an expectation. And that philosophy permeates your whole existence here. Every day you wake up with the expectation that it'll be a better day for you than the day before was. What I found in my time here is that everything that goes on at Ability Camp is carefully calculated to put the client in the best possible position to take advantage of the resources that are available here. This is not a hospital. It's not a medical facility. But there is an enduring therapeutic atmosphere here that simply doesn't permit someone seeking recover, recovery to do any less than all that they can do to get the recovery that they came for. The unique combination of hyperbaric oxygen therapy and conductive education along with the ability to share experiences and resources with others also seeking recovery on a 24-hour day basis is unlike any therapeutic experience I've had since my stroke. It is intensive, exhausting, and continually rewarding. In March of 1997, I was a healthy 48-year-old elementary school principal who survived what my medical charge termed a massive right cerebral artery stroke that left me virtually paralyzed on my left side. Numerous therapy modalities over the years enabled me to regain limited use of my left leg. I was able to walk short distances awkwardly and with considerable discomfort and exertion. As of three weeks ago, I still had no use of my left hand and arm. In two and a half weeks, consisting of 32 hyperbaric dives and 24 hours of conductive education sessions, have brought about the following changes. Each of the last three days, I have voluntarily, and with great enthusiasm and anticipation, walked a mile after completing a full day of therapy. For at least the last week, wherever and whenever I walk within the camp, I carry something in my previously useless left hand. The last three days, during the conductive ed sessions, I have walked up and down stairs without shuffling at each step and without holding on to a railing. This is not a skill. I yet have confidence to do outside of class, but I am sure that will come. Almost doable. Yeah, you wait for me. That's good too. <laughs> yes. Nice work, man. Very good. So way to go. Good job. Very good. Very good. You can go in if you want, or you can wait for Granny. I gotta wait for my body. Okay, wait for your body. Yes. Yes. Good job. Nicely. In each of the last three days of classes, I have been able to extend my left arm from the shoulder on command. These and other small improvements in my physical skills add up to the belief and expectation that practicing what I have learned in class here at camp will continue to produce gains when I return home. I leave Ability Camp with both hope for more recovery and the expectation that knowledge acquired during my stay here makes that hope realistic. Thank you for listening. 
I would be more than happy to discuss my experiences here with you in detail if you wish. Speak with an Ability Camp staff member for my contact information. Hello, my name is Linda Hall Perry. I'm from West Virginia. I had a stroke about two years ago. It's such a helpless feeling. I mean, and it's just like a weight bearing down on you and you just feel like crying all the time and because your life is just so different from what you're used to. Especially if you're used to doing everything before and then all of a sudden now you can't. Tunda is the conductive education therapist and she is awesome. I mean, she is awesome because she will push you and make sure that you get it. She won't give up on you because I was so scared to death. I, I remember saying to her, please don't give up on me because I was scared of everything and I thought she would get frustrated with me. But no, she didn't. She's got lots of patience and she just, she lets you know you can do it. And she says she understands that you're scared and she will work with you. But the other day I had such a good day. I mean, I was able to do everything the conductor asked me to do. I mean, it wasn't easy, but with her coaching and um, she, she let me know that I could do it. And um, I did it, and it felt so good. It was like a weight was lifted off of me. I felt so, I felt best, better than I felt in two years that I've had the stroke. I felt like I could do anything. And you know what? I believe I can. <laughs> I can walk on the grass. I can go up and down steps. I could not go down steps. I was coming up steps a little bit, but I wasn't even that comfortable with that. But now, I don't have a problem going up or down steps. I mean, it's unbelievable. Before I came here, I could not walk down those steps. I was petrified. I'm not scared, scared to steps anymore. They have a ramp here. I was scared to death to go down a ramp, like, because it's like downhill, and that was unheard of for me. I mean, I wouldn't even step foot on a ramp like that. Too petrified. Didn't even like to go on it with a wheelchair, let alone walk with it. Now I can walk up and down a ramp like nothing with my hemi walker. Brenda, you couldn't pay me to do this at the beginning. You can do it. I did it. And the first time I did it, I couldn't use my Emmy at all. I had to hold up the railing. She said, second time, she says, no railing. Emmy. Look at it, too. I'm talking and walking. Yeah. <laughs> it's a miracle. Yeah. Talking and walking, Brenda. At the same time. <laughs> That's a first. I like it. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Walk on the grass. Walk on the grass. I haven't done this in two years. I'm actually walking on the grass, the uneven grass. I'm doing so well now. I walked 40 minutes the other day on grass, and I really miss going in my garden because I. Every year I go into my garden, plant my flowers and whatnot, or, or just sit in my garden and just admire how beautiful it is. Now when I, I can't wait to get back home because when I get home I will be in my garden because now I have the ability to walk into my garden, have a seat and admire just like I used to. I am so happy and so proud of myself since I've been here. We are bringing the hyperbaric chamber and it's not scary at all. I mean, it's quite comforting, just relaxing actually. A combination of the of the hyperbaric therapy and the conductive education therapy together, whoa, it's awesome. When I came here, I came with the wheelchair. I would leave that wheelchair. Wherever I went, that wheelchair went with me with me. But now I'm walking with the Henry all through the camp. <laughs>
Now, like, guess what? I crossed my legs the other day and was able to take my shoe off at the same time. That was the first. Now this is my paralyzed side, my left side. Now I can pick up my leg and cross it. Look, it's there. Can't tell me nothing. <laughs> Yesterday I talked to my husband and I said, you know what, babe? I said, you can your wife back. <laughs> he started laughing. I said, I'm never back. You can your wife back. He likes when I talk confidence like that because usually I'm just so depressed all the time. So all the things I can't do with. If you would like further information about Ability Camp, you can visit our website at www.abilitycamp.com or give us a call on our toll free number at 1 800 442 6992.